Good morning. While we've been preoccupied to a great extent with the presidential race, there's been a lot going on up on Beacon Hill, and who better to talk to about what is going on than the Speaker of the Massachusetts House of Representatives from Winthrop, State Representative Robert DeLeo. Mr. Speaker? Great to be here. Good to have you. Great to have you here in your new digs here. You I, like I, it? I like it. Boy, you saw that you are keep on moving up, up, and up. Well, parking is an additional <laughs> expense, but, uh, well, be that as it may, thank you for coming over. We appreciate it. Mr. Speaker, last month, a member of the state Senate, Jamie Eldridge, wrote to a group of Bernie Sanders supporters, according to The Globe, that there are plenty of conservative Democrats who have been elected unchallenged for years at the local and legislative level. I think the time is ripe for Sanders. Sanders supporters and progressives to take over the mass Democratic Party and have a serious influence on its platform, candidates, and policies, end quote. Now, he's talking in large part about the House. What's your response to him? Do you think he is? I think he is, <laughs> yes. Um, well, uh, first of all, I know and serve with Jamie, a lot of respect for Jamie. On the other hand, um, what I'd like to say that I've always felt pride in the fact that the Massachusetts uh, Democratic Party, I feel, I felt, and I still feel, um, you know, has a wide tent in terms of who is inclusive uh, in our party. You know, we can have the liberals, we can have the moderates, we can have the conservatives, and um, we can all work uh, together for the betterment of um, the party. So, with all due respect uh, to uh, those folks, I think who are probably trying to. Uh, maybe turn into the party just into progressive wing of the party. Um, I think we're doing just fine uh, the way we are. I think it's most important that we have those divergent views in our party. I think that's what makes us uh, so important. And quite frankly, I don't know why we as a Democratic, Democratic Party want to go the same route to our friends in the Republican Party with having that uh, Tea Party subdivision as, as well. Well, you've always been uh, focused to a great extent on uh, the economy, on job creation and so forth, and uh, you've been perceived as a key component of the resistance to new broad-based taxation on Beacon Hill. If the House were to skew more liberal what would that mean? Would that mean tax hikes? I mean, we know the Senate is ready to raise taxes. They're obviously a more liberal body than the House. Yeah, I, I think that obviously, um, as Speaker, with 159 other members, part of my job is to really to take the pulse of uh, the members. Although, you know, my philosophy may be, you know, X, Y, and, and Z. Um, obviously, uh, in terms of where we go, depends greatly in terms of the mood and the feelings of the members. Can, you know, can I be one of the leaders, is, is, you know, in, in, in terms of some of the sentiments of the House? Sure. But ultimately, it, it comes down to the members. And, and um, I'd have to say, I think the members in the House, I think you're right. I think there's probably more moderates um, in the House than there are in the Senate. And, and that's okay. That's what makes Massachusetts great in terms of, um, in, in terms of uh, debate. Um, but uh, right now, uh, I have not seen I, I have not seen a big uh, shift in the mood of the house. This is this year's elections um, could bring in. Obviously, we'll see how many seats. Hopefully, that we uh, we we gain or keep and have some good new young blood coming in. We look forward to working with them uh, and their views at them being just out there. But um, I, I, again. Uh, I think, first of all, I think the party should be all-inclusive. Well, we have, to, we have to take a break, but before we do, just to clarify, regardless of who gets elected in November, your concern that we stay away from broad-based tax hikes remains intact? Uh, that would be, has always been my, my goal. Okay. Um, having said that, I feel that uh, in December we have our um, revenue uh, hearings, and then we go into the budget process. I think it's only fair. Uh, for me to uh, listen um, to the economists uh, around the state and see what their views are, what their recommendations would be. But it, it, as you know, my his, history has been the, to stay away from uh, taxes. But you're but keeping I, an open mind. But I want to yeah. let people make their statement. All right. We'll take a short break and we'll continue our conversation with House Speaker Robert DeLeo in a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking with House Speaker Robert DeLeo. And Mr. Speaker, uh, 
Y your party, the state Democratic Party, has been going after the Baker administration lately uh, over a couple of episodes, one involving uh, apparent misconduct by executive branch officials, uh, one involving the use of state resources for a party fundraiser. There's another one currently involving alleged political intimidation. Do you see a problem there? I mean, your party's claiming that uh, this administration, maybe they don't quite use the word corrupt, but that's where they're headed. Well, I would, I would say, look, at, first of all, um, I've had a great relationship with the governor. I don't think that's any secret. I think that uh, he, myself, and the Senate president are able to work together. I think we get things done. So that when you talk about some of the uh, discord that you see in Washington, the uh, political uh, backbiting and whatnot. We don't have that in Massachusetts. As a result, I think we get a whole lot more done. Having said that, you know, um, although some of those uh, items that you mentioned are fairly new, and because of that, I really don't know of the details. Um, you know, the issue relative to DCR, I think he came out quickly. I think he handled it uh, appropriately in terms of making sure that anything to do with it, there was some uh, uh, some suspensions and, 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 and what, whatever else he, you know, he, he, he may have done. So um, well, I, think, I think from the governor's, looking at it from the governor's perspective, um, I think when he, uh, as opposed to just ignoring um, those allegations or, or those concerns, I think he has come out. I think he, uh, you know, has done in terms of uh, making sure that there's been uh, proper review, uh, which we're in the process. And, and I see we have to let those play out to see exactly what exactly action, if any, he takes as a result of that. Now, I can't let you get in and out of here without talking a little presidential politics. I know you're a big Hillary Clinton supporter. Yes. Um, and I don't want to give anything away, but uh, tomorrow, Monday, uh, we will be releasing some initial results from the new WBZ UMass Amherst poll, including on where the presidential race stands in Massachusetts. And the results are kind of eyebrow raising. What do you make of the quality of the Clinton campaign? Um, I think here in Massachusetts, I think we do a good job. Um, I'm not sure um, in terms of, uh, you know, countrywide. Um, I'm amazed, as we're sitting here in September, you and I are talking, I have no idea what those latest are going to be. Some of the latest polls that I've seen in the national scene has showed uh, within two points, yeah. within four points. Dead heat, yeah. And it, with all due respect, if you had told me, first of all, I never thought Trump was even going to be a candidate. Right. Uh, the candidate. And now not only is the candidate, but there's a possibility. So, uh, like I've told the Clinton people, we've got to get on our horse and we have to work. I'm going to be trying to get some folks to go to New Hampshire and other parts around the country to help. And I think we've got to, we've got our work cut out for us. And this can't be taken for granted. Never a dull moment, Mr. Speaker. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. see you, Always sir. Appreciate it. House Speaker Robert DeLeo. That's it for me. Now I'm going to throw it back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.